Here we go with lesson 37, part A of two parts, section 11.1, .1, and we'll be dealing with parabolas. Well, the definition of parabola is the set of all points in a plane. Uh, the points are equal distance from a fixed point F, the focus, and a fixed line L, the directrix, that lie in the same plane. And I have here a horizontal parabola and a vertical parabola. And we're going to define these points as we move along. Now I've also got, this looks a little complicated, but I picked an arbitrary point on each of these and I showed you where the focus is at and I picked a point B on each curve and that distance from F to B from the focus to the B is exactly the same as the distance from B to C there to the directrix. So that's the definition of a parabola. It's the collection of points in a plane that are all equal distance from a fixed point F and a fixed line L. So the axis of the parabola is the line through the focus, through F, that is perpendicular to the directrix. So with the horizontal parabola, that's that x-axis. That's the line that's horizontal. The axis is horizontal. With the vertical parabola, in our example, it's the y-axis. It's the line that is vertical. That's where they get their name, vertical parabola or horizontal parabola. They get that from their, uh, from their axis. The vertex of the parabola is the point V on the axis halfway from the focus to the to the directrix. The vertex is the point on the parabola that's closest to the directrix. And that seems to be the point most people concern themselves with is the vertex. It is a point on the curve, whereas the focus is not a point on the curve. Just to be clear, the vertex and the focus are points. The directrix and the axis are lines. Now the distance from the vertex to the focus and from the vertex to the directrix is P units. We did not. We, we, we use the letter P there. And therefore, the distance from the focus to the directrix is, well, 2 P units. And we'll use that P in our formulas for these ellipses. So here's the base equation for a vertical parabola. X squared equals 4 PY. Notice we have X squared, we have Y degree 1. 4 P is the coefficient in front of the degree 1 term, in this case the Y. P is that distance from the focus to the vertex or the vertex to the directrix. This is for a vertical parabola. Now for a horizontal parabola, it's y squared equals 4px. P is still the distance from the vertex to the focus or the vertex to the directrix. And 4p is that coefficient in front of the degree 1 term. So if it's y squared, it's opening right or left. It's horizontal. If it's x squared, it's opening up or down, vertical. And this is just to recap and show you how similar they are. Um, and again, vertical up or down, x squared. Horizontal, that means it's opening right or left, that's y squared. P is that distance from the focus to the, to the vertex or from the vertex to the directrix. So these are the base equations. So here's our first example. For the equation of the parabola x squared equals 8y, find the vertex, the focus, and the directrix, and then we're going to sketch it out. Well, the vertex is at the origin. We haven't done anything with that yet, so our, our, our vertex is going to be at 0, 0. So there we show the vertex at the origin. It's opening up. And the reason we know it's opening up is because 8 is positive. If it had been negative, it would have been opening down. So I've got it going through the vertex at the origin. I have it generally opening up. The focus has to be above in this case because, again, the, the parabola has to wrap its arms around the focus. So we've got to figure out what the value of p is. So I set 8 equal to 4p because it's in that form of x squared equals 4py. So 8 is equal to 4p. So p is equal to 2, so that tells me the distance from the vertex to the focus is 2 units. So if I go up 2 units, I'm at 0, 2. Now the directrix has to be in the opposite direction, 2 units, again, from the vertex. So we pop that in there at y equal negative 2. The distance from the vertex to the directrix is exactly the same as the distance from the vertex to the focus. And that directrix is going right to left. The y never changes. It's y equals negative 2. There, we did it. That's all we're doing. It's not too tough. Let's do another one. 2y squared equals negative 5x. Uh, we're going to have to find the vertex, the focus, and the directrix. Uh, you won't be shocked to find out that the vertex is still at the origin. Now, since that's a negative on that x, negative 5x, now we've got to simplify this first. This is going to open left because with horizontal parabolas, that's where the y squared, negative opens left. With vertical parabolas, that's where we have an x squared, negative would open down. So now we're going to divide both sides by 2, and we're going to solve this for y squared. 
And when we do that, we get y squared equals negative 5 halves x. Well, that's in the form of y squared equals 4px. So we set the negative 5 halves equal to 4p, divide by 4, and we get negative 5 eighths. Isn't that beautiful? So our focus has got to be 5 eighths of a unit to the left of the vertex. And our directors has to be 5 eighths of the units to the right. So that's why our focus is at negative 5 eighths 0, and our directrix is, that, is at that line x equals 5 eighths. We got it. Again, the focus and the directrix will each be equal distance from the vertex. So what happens when we want to move the vertex from the origin? Well, we'll move it to h comma k. That'll be our new our new vertex. So it's x minus h and y minus k. And it doesn't make any difference whether it's a horizontal or vertical. The h always goes um, with the x and the k always goes with the y. So here's an example problem. Uh, y minus 2 squared equals 12 x minus 1. We're going to find the vertex, the focus, and the directrix. And be careful here. This is a horizontal. The y came first. When you go to find that vertex, go find the parentheses with the x, then go find the parentheses with the y. So if we slow down and we'll find the vertex is at 1 comma 2, because again, it, it's the form of x minus h and y minus k, so it's always opposite. So the vertex is at 1, 2, it's opening to the right because the 12 is positive. So I got a quick sketch here. It doesn't have to be a perfect sketch, but it's a quick sketch. All right, so we're going to take that 12 and we're going to set it equal to 4p, because our basic formula here is y squared equals 4px. So I set 4p equal 12, and p comes out to be 3. So that means I move three units to the right from the vertex to find the focus. And if I do that, I'm at 4, comma 2. Now, how do I find the directrix? I go in the other direction, three units from the vertex. So I walk backwards three units. I go left three units, and I come up with x equals negative 2. So there's my directrix. And again, the directrix is equal distance uh, from, the vo from the vertex as the focus. We did it. All right, let's get into some nasty ones here. Uh, this is x plus 3 squared equals negative 1 third y minus 2. Well, the vertex isn't too hard to find, but look at that 4p. It's negative 1 third, and so your p is going to be really small, but we're all big kids. We can deal with fractions. So our vertex is at negative 3, 2. So that's x minus a minus 3 and y minus 2. That's how we come up with the vertex. Now, I know it's opening down because it's x squared, which is up or down. And because it's a negative one-third out in front of the degree one term, it's got to open down. So just get a rough sketch in there through your vertex. At least you'll be thinking about the right direction. Now the focus has to be below, in this case, the vertex. And so I set negative one-third equal to four. I divide both sides by four. I get negative one-twelfth. I mean, this is nasty. We are only one-twelfth of a unit between the vertex and the focus and between the vertex and the directrix. Since I'm going down, I mess with the y. So it's negative 3 doesn't change from vertex to focus because I'm heading down. I take 2 minus 1 twelfth and I get 1 and 11 twelfths. As an improper fraction, it would be what? 23 twelfths? I'm just going to write 1 and 11 twelfths. To find my directrix, I have to go up a twelfth of a unit. So again, I'm going to add that onto the 2 in the vertex because when you go up and down, you mess only with the y. So 2 plus a twelfth would be, well, 2 and a twelfth. So it's y equal 2 and a twelfth. And again, that would be what? 25 twelfths if you made an improper fraction? We did it. Don't be scared off by these really small values for p. You'll be okay. So here's the expanded form of the equation of a parabola. And I know it's y squared, so it's going to open to the right or the left, but I can't really tell if it's open right or left until we complete the square. Uh-oh, there's an old term. Complete the square and get it in standard form. All right, so the first thing I do is I subtract the 4x and I subtract the 45 to the other side. And I leave some, myself some room there. And I'm going to complete the square on the left side. So I cut 14 in half, that's 7. 7 squared is 49. So I add 49 to both sides. And the reason I do that is y squared plus 14y plus 49 is y plus 7 squared. No magic going on here. That's just a perfect square. Now on the right side, I've got negative 4x plus 4. I have to get the degree 1 term with a coefficient of 1. So I've got to factor out a negative 4. And when I do that, I have negative 4 times the quantity x minus 1 on the right side. Hey, look at that. My vertex then is going to be at 1, negative 7. We did it. 
we, we put it in standard form. We were able to find the vertex. And I can tell you something else. It opens to the left because it's y squared, which means right or left. It's horizontal. Because it's a negative 4, it's going to open left. And that's all we're going to do with this. Uh, this one's going to be a little easier to get into standard form. We will not have to complete the square because we have x squared with no other x. So I'm just going to subtract 20y from both sides and factor it. Uh, take, a, take a common term out of that right side. So subtract 20y. Uh, I need to get the y to have a coefficient of 1, so unfortunately I need to uh, factor out a negative 20, and when I do that it leaves me with behind with a negative 1 half, because 10 divided by negative 20 is negative 1 half. So my vertex is going to be at 0, comma 1 half. You can kind of think of that as being x minus 0 squared, but we never write that as x minus 0 squared. There you go. All right. So there's three pieces of information. There's the vertex, the focus, and the directors. If we give you two of those pieces, you can pretty much figure out the rest. We can also just give you the vertex and a point on the curve. But here we're giving you the vertex and the focus. So what you want to do is sketch these out and get a rough idea of what the, what the ellipse or what the parabola looks like. And if we do that, if I put the vertex down there at 3, negative 1, and I put the focus up there at 3, 2, remember the, the parabola has to go around the focus. So this is opening up which means it's x squared equals 4py. And then I can walk the distance between the vertex to the focus. That's p units. And so if I do that, if I just count those off, p is 4. So 4p would be 12. So since I had the vertex and I knew it was going to be an x squared problem, I had x minus 3 squared equals 4py plus 1. p is a positive 12 because it's opening up. There, I'm done. x minus 3 squared equals 12y plus 1. It's not the most difficult thing in the world to do. Just sketch them out, and then you got to find that value for p, if, we, if you can find it, times it by 4, and figure out which equation you want to use, x squared or y squared. If it's opening down or to the left, it'll be a negative. If it's opening up or to the right, it'll be a positive. Let's try another one. The vertex is at negative 2, 3, and the focus is at negative 6, 3. Again, sketch it out. You might want to stop the video here and see if you can figure this out for yourself before we move on. So the vertex is there at negative 2, 3. The focus is at negative 6, 3, so that's to the left. Well, that means this is horizontal. That's a y squared. So y squared equals 4px. And then I can walk the distance between the vertex and the focus to get my p. So it's going to be y minus 3, x minus a minus 2. That's x plus 2. I've got the 4p there. I walk the distance from the vertex to the focus, and I find it to be a negative 4 units. You can think positive 4 units if you want to. So 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. So my 4p has to be negative 16. We're done. It's y minus 3 squared equals negative 16, x plus 2. We did it. Well, this concludes the first part of Lesson 37. There is a Part B. Uh, you can get going on the homework now, or you can watch Part B and then do all the homework at one time, or, or you can take a break. That might be a good idea. I don't know. So it's up to you what you want to do. But there is a second part to this Lesson 37.